Now, what happened actually is that we have seen the two scenarios in Belgium and in the Sri Lanka. If you remember the Belgium scenario here, the majority of people in the nation is the Dutch spoken people who would try to take a control or the other group of people and it would be messing up with the French people trying to claim the influence on the capital while the Dutch people trying to claim their influence over the nation. So situations would be, have become worst where in the same case with Sri Lanka here, the Sinhalis were more than majority here, 74% who would try to claim their majority on the other groups like the Tamilians where they would be facing difficulties here. So let us try to understand actually what happened here and what are the consequences of this one. Now, in Sri Lanka, they adopted the policy of majoritarianism. As if you all know, in some terms, the democracy is nothing but the rule of the majority. We consider democracy as the large participation of the people in the framing or the policy work of the government or in order to establish the government, they choose their representatives. So now, let us assume like democracy is nothing but the rule of the majority and Simhalas are in majority in Sri Lanka obviously it would be right to conclude like Simhalas are having a major say in the democratic setup of Sri Lanka. The Sri Lanka is a nation which was once a colony of the British as a part and parcel of India. It is also known as classical colony. As the time passed on India emerged as an independent nation in the year 1947. In the very next year, in 1948, Sri Lanka has been given freedom. So, the newly independent nation is got its independence in the year 1948 from the Britishers and established itself as an independent nation that is Sri Lanka now. So, as we all know, the Simhalis are 74% in the entire population of Sri Lanka. Obviously, the Simhalis, Simhala supremacy has been tried to be established by the governments, by the leaders who later on came to power. As you all know that the majority of the population in Sri Lanka are Simhala people. The minority community comes, the Tamilians, and again there is a division in the Tamilians, that is they are Indian Tamilians, Sri Lankan Tamilians. So obviously, this is the situation now and they have gone to the opinion of majoritarian rule over the minority as democracy would mostly be considered as the rule of, of majority. So, depending on the policy of the rule of the majority, the leaders whoever has been established as a new emerging leaders of Sri Lanka tried to bring the supremacy of the Simhala people. So, this gave in 1956 to bring or to frame a special laws or special acts giving a special importance or special privileges to the people of the Simhala community people and disregarding them from the privileges of the Tamilians. So, for example, if there are any posts in regarding to the university positions or anything else, the Simhala people would be given preference for them to get job there. The Tamilians were denied the equal opportunities in the university. Though it may be in a central university, but the Tamilians are denied the job opportunities because they do not belong to the majority group of people in the nation. So these kind of laws have started to alienate the people of Tamilians from the existing government and a section of people living there. Slowly, this led to a situation where there is inequality popping up in the actual looking of the people. There is a lot of uh, discrimination between the Simhala community people and the Tamilians. And later on, when the next year, when the uh, Sri Lankan new constitution was drafted, in the new constitution, they clearly made specification about the religion that the new constitution would strive 
to foster the religion of Buddhism as the national religion or the state religion of Sri Lanka. So, when the new government was formed and it started to declare publicly that they are going to make Buddhism as an official religion and foster and make the steps to foster Buddhism in the entire Sri Lanka. So, these kind of developments, the 1956 Act or the special privileges which are granted to the Simhala community people made the Tamilians to feel that they are being discarded from the original benefits what they have to get. They started to feel alienated from the actual framework of the equality status. So when these kind of developments approached, the Tamilians started to raise their voice. They started to push towards the political parties and establish the political parties and started to make Tamil to be recognized as an official language. So the efforts which were kept by the Tamilians in the initial years were being neglected and they were never being acknowledged with a positive sign by the then existing Sri Lankan government. These all steps further led to establish a strong group or an emerging political party known as the Tamil Elam. So, the new party which came up in 1980 with the truly support of the Tamilians who are living in the northern part and the northeastern provinces of Sri Lanka is the Tamil Elam group in 1980. This party aim was to bring an equal status to the Tamilians and a respect to the religions, the practices which are followed by the Tamilians. So, this step further led a controversy and a conflict between the dominant Simhala group and the minority group of Tamilians. This led to a disastrous civil war. Civil war means the people fight with each other. A, a, a particular group of people come in conflict with the other group of people as it happened now where the conflict of Simhalas versus the Tamilians led to a civil war and this war led to a setback to the development of Sri Lanka not only in the terms of economics but also socio-cultural development also has come down drastically. So the civil war has killed many thousands of people of both the communities. It has draw back the entire development graph of Sri Lanka to a very drastically low level. The security levels in Sri Lanka were also being tightened up. The situations are completely different with the prior to the actual setup of Sri Lanka and after the civil war. The situations became worst. The political instability also started to pop up and it is like a war situation between the people of the own country people of Tamilians as well as the Simhala group. So these kind of civil wars or the majoritarianism did not work properly in Sri Lanka. Yes. It is a democratic definition of the rule of the majority and we need to understand the clauses of democracy very clearly that everybody should be given the opportunity of equality here. The basic things of equality, liberty and justice when these are denied in any society, in any context, obviously that would lead to a revolt or a war or a mistrust between the existing communities of people. What actually happened? in the example of Sri Lanka. So this civil war has set back the development of Sri Lanka socially, economically and even politically. Now let us see what happened in Belgium. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel to get more videos on CBSE syllabus.